Donald Trump has just ordered the Department of War to prepare the possible military action in Nigeria. The U.S. won't invade Nigeria with tatties. We have no fear of whatever Trump is doing. Let them come. Picture this. A senior analyst in a U.S. defense center is scrolling through intelligence files on a sleepy Tuesday and stops cold. He reads it twice. We've got a problem. Why? Because Nigeria just announced it can build and field combat drones, guns, and armor made for African battlefields. And days after Donald Trump publicly hinted at possible military action in Nigeria, Washington's planners are suddenly wide awake. This isn't just a weapon story. It's a supply chain revolution that could flip a $20 billion market and rewrite Africa's relationship with the world. Stay with me. I'll explain what Nigeria just did, why the US is worried, and what it means for Africa's future. If someone had told you three months ago that Nigeria, yes, that Nigeria, would shake the entire global defense industry, you'd probably have laughed. Nigeria, the country with constant currency crises, the one that waited seven years for America to deliver fighter jets while terrorists wreaked havoc at home. That very same Nigeria, but in April, everything changed. Nigeria didn't just showcase new technology. It made a declaration to the global arms market. We don't need you anymore. And what happened that day goes far beyond military strategy. It marks a turning point that could redefine how Africa deals with the world. It all began in a modest government building in Abuja. Let's rewind to 2014. The country's north was in chaos. Boko Haram had just kidnapped 276 Chibok schoolgirls, a tragedy that captured global attention. Nigeria was desperate, and the world responded with hashtags, sympathy, and little else. So what did Nigeria do? It followed the same path as many African nations under threat. It tried to buy security. The US promised to deliver $600 million worth of Super Tucano jets within 18 months. They arrived seven years later. And during that long wait, terrorists seized territories larger than some European countries. They ruled communities, destroyed lives, and forced millions into displacement, all while Nigeria's money sat idle. But buying weapons as an African nation has never been just about technology. It's about dependency. The deal often comes with unwritten conditions. Yes, we'll sell to you but you'll support our candidates at the UN. You'll open your economy to our companies. You won't get too independent. As one defense minister once put it, why must every bullet cost us a piece of our sovereignty? Think about that. Having to ask your neighbor's permission every time you fix your own fence. That's been Africa's reality. But necessity breeds change. So just recently, 2025, what seemed like an ordinary Thursday morning in Abuja became historic. Nigeria unveiled the Danza attack drone, not licensed, not imported, but built and tested entirely on Nigerian soil. General Christopher Musa summed it up perfectly. In a world where global politics make it harder for countries to access advanced defense systems, nations that don't build their own will always face diplomatic delays, even when they can pay. The Danza drone isn't just a machine, it's a message. Equipped with real-time satellite communications, precision targeting, and 14-hour flight endurance, it was engineered for Nigeria's own realities. Dense forests where bandits hide, swamps where oil thieves operate, and extreme heat that often disables imported tech. Unlike Turkish or Chinese models, designed for their own climates and conflicts, the Danza drone fits Africa's environment perfectly and costs 60% less than imported alternatives. In short, Nigeria didn't just build a drone, it built freedom. But here's the twist, something the headlines completely missed. While global media fixated on Nigeria's sleek new drone, the country was quietly building something far more disruptive, not just to geopolitics, but to the entire defense ecosystem. Take one of Nigeria's rising defense manufacturers, the EIB Group. They now employ over a thousand people, but what makes them unique isn't just their size, 
it's their strategy. Most of their engineers and developers aren't sitting behind office desks. They're out in the field, working directly with soldiers, learning firsthand what breaks, what works, and what's needed. Just as Ukraine studied battlefield tactics with drones against Russia, Nigeria has been watching, learning, and adapting. And now, those same agile FPV drones that reshape warfare in Eastern Europe. Nigeria is producing its own versions, alongside locally made firearms and tactical gear. They even developed a homegrown version of the AK-103 rifle, the D-103, and now manufacture armored vehicles and bulletproof vests entirely within their borders. One EIB executive, Bride Chufu, said something that sounded outrageous just a few years ago. Nigeria no longer depends on any other nation for its security. Five years ago, that would have been dismissed as wishful thinking. Now, the results speak for themselves. In 2022, Nigeria was losing more than 100,000 barrels of oil a day to theft, a massive blow to the economy. Today, losses have dropped to just 5,000 barrels daily, while oil production has risen from 1.1 million to 1.75 million barrels per day. Coincidence? Maybe. But when military reports start mentioning Nigerian-made weapons in successful operations and commanders talk about force multipliers and enhanced capability, it's hard not to connect the dots. That's when the global defense industry began to panic. Imagine playing chess and realizing your opponent has been following an entirely new rulebook. That's exactly what Nigeria just did. Because this isn't just about one country building weapons. It's about Nigeria asking the question that keeps defense contractors awake at night. What happens if Africa no longer needs us? Reports from the African Chiefs of Defense Staff meetings reveal something striking. Other nations aren't just admiring Nigeria's progress, they're placing orders. Why? Because Nigerian arms are priced in local currency, optimized for African climates and terrain, free from political strings or foreign conditions. Producing drones and weapons locally means Nigeria can respond faster to security threats, avoid diplomatic delays, and keep control over its supply chains. Contrast that with the alternatives. American equipment, you'll wait years and pass human rights audits. Chinese weapons, be ready for hidden conditions. Russian tech, only if you're on good political terms. Nigerian systems, just pay, no politics, no waiting. Now imagine you're sitting in a defense boardroom in Washington or Beijing, watching Africa's $20 billion annual arms market slowly pivot south toward Nigeria. You'd pay attention, fast. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Nigeria isn't just trying to replace global suppliers. It's positioning itself as Africa's own arsenal. What happens when Ghana realizes Nigerian drones perform better in West Africa's humidity than imported ones? Or when Kenya learns that Nigerian-made gear outlasts European models in East Africa's dust and heat? Suddenly, the old monopoly of foreign defense suppliers starts to crumble. And that's what really terrifies the global powers. But here's the real question. If Nigeria can pull this off, why can't others? The truth is, building weapons legally is one thing. Using them effectively is another. That's where the challenge begins. Nigeria still faces major internal threats. Bandits in the north, pipeline thieves in the south, and terrorists in the northeast. If these homegrown weapons fail to deliver real results on the battlefield, all the height becomes little more than expensive showmanship. But early signs tell a different story. Nigerian forces equipped with locally made drones have started to locate and dismantle terrorist camps more efficiently. The governor of Plateau State even announced that his region is now safer thanks to these new drones. And here's the twist that really stands out. Nigerian-made AK-103 rifles have been found in the hands of bandits themselves. Think about that. The same weapons built to eliminate them are so effective that the enemy wants to use them too. 
But the bigger question lingers, what happens if Nigeria actually succeeds? What if the country manages to defeat terrorism and crime using its own technology without foreign help? At that point, every African nation will start asking the same question. If Nigeria can protect itself with homegrown weapons, why can't we? That single question could flip the entire global defense order. As the proverb goes, a lion doesn't borrow claws. What if Africa finally decided to forge its own? Now imagine this, not just Nigeria, but a united African defense ecosystem. An alliance built not for war, but for production and innovation. Picture this, every African nation contributes just 1% of its GDP to a joint defense development fund, creating a $20 billion annual budget purely for research, manufacturing, and security innovation. Then, regional hubs specialize in what they do best. Nigeria focuses on small arms and drones. South Africa leads in armored vehicle design, their NRAPs are already world-class. Egypt handles aerospace and defense engineering. Morocco masters cybersecurity and digital warfare systems. With this model, Africa could negotiate on equal terms with nations like Brazil, India, and Turkey, partners who seek collaboration, not control. The outcome? A self-reliant Africa building its own defense systems, funded by African money, guided by African priorities, and tailored to African realities. Sound ambitious? Maybe. But Nigeria has already proven that the idea works. It showed that an African nation can design, produce, and deploy advanced military technology successfully. Now the real test is whether other African leaders have the vision to see what Nigeria saw and the courage to act on it. Because let's be honest, there are powerful interests that thrive on keeping Africa dependent. They won't step aside easily. That's where the continent stands today, at a crossroads. One path keeps Africa as a consumer, dependent, waiting, borrowing claws. The other path, inspired by Nigeria's breakthrough, makes Africa a producer, defining its own strength, its own rules, its own destiny. Many nations across Africa still lack the political courage to break free from the grip of foreign influence. Pressured by powerful suppliers and tangled in dependency, they continue buying imported weapons, bound by strings that limit their sovereignty. The result? A continent that remains fragile, reliant, and controlled by external powers. But then there's path two, the path Nigeria has boldly stepped onto a path where countries begin sharing technology, building local defense industries, and achieving genuine security independence. Imagine an Africa that not only protects itself, but manufactures its own security solutions. Between the two choices, the better path is clear. Yet here's the uncomfortable truth. Change threatens power. The global arms industry didn't build decades of influence and relationships to simply let go of a $20 billion market. These established players will resist. They'll offer better deals, spin stories about how independence is risky or unrealistic, and use fear to keep Africa dependent. Still, there's reason for hope. Africa's worsening security landscape, climate conflicts, piracy, terrorism, and internal instability demands African-made solutions. Only those who live these realities can design tools that truly address them. Nigeria has already shown that independence is possible. Now the question is, will the rest of Africa have the determination to follow? If you're African, this is your moment to ask hard questions. Why don't our leaders invest in domestic defense manufacturing? Why do we still negotiate our safety with those who profit from our insecurity? If you're part of the African diaspora, you too have a role. Support African tech innovators, defense startups, and engineering projects. Your investment could fuel the very spark that lights a continental transformation. And if you're watching from afar, understand this. What's happening isn't just about military might. It's about redefining Africa's place in the world. An Africa that builds its own security, 
no longer needs permission to protect itself. An Africa that manufactures its own defense technologies doesn't bow to anyone. It stands as an equal. Nigeria's breakthrough has revealed a powerful truth. The continent already has the technology, the talent, and the resources. The only remaining question is whether Africa will finally use what it has or continue relying on those who gain from its dependence. So what do you think? Are we witnessing the rise of a new self-reliant Africa, one forging its own defense revolution? Or will the old powers and internal resistance keep things just as they've always been? Share your thoughts below. And if this changed your perspective, share it with someone who needs to see Africa's story from a new angle. <laughs>